Norse mythology, legends and history were passed down orally for generations until the arrival and acceptance of Christianity. The runic alphabet of Scandinavian countries was used only for memorial stones or to convey brief messages, simply because runes were not meant for long narratives. So the tales of gods and heroes which make up the Norse mythology were memorized by poets, who would sing them for crowds and would teach them to people who would in their turn sing them for the next generation. Meaning the Hall of the Slain, Valhalla is the afterlife realm in Norse mythology for fallen heroes who were selected by Valkyries to become an army fighting against the forces of chaos at Ragnarok. The modern English name Valhalla derives from the Old Norse Valhol, a compound noun composed of two elements, the masculine noun Valr and the feminine noun Hall, which mean the slain and Hall respectively. Valr has the same linguistic derivation as some other nouns in Germanic languages that mean slaughter, carnage, battlefield or bloodbath. The second element is a common ancient Norse word related to the modern English term hall. In Swedish folklore, some mountains that were traditionally regarded as homes of the dead were also called Valhall. It is therefore possible that the hall element in Valhall comes from a word meaning rock or mountain, originally referring to a form of afterlife. Among related Old Norse concepts, Valr also appears as the first element of the noun Valkyria, those who choose the slain and commonly known today as Valkyrie. In this earlier vision, the Valkyries were understood as deathlike entities who carried the souls of fallen warriors to a kind of eternal battlefield strewn with stones or one below a range of mountains. It is unclear when Valhol changed to the familiar Valhalla, but the image of the Hall of Heroes and Kings being served by Valkyries is among the best known from Norse mythology and appears frequently in movies, music and video games. Valhalla was believed to be located in a certain grove in Asgard, presided over by the head god of the Norse pantheon himself. It was the home of the Norse heroes, called the Einar Jar, who had died bravely and honorably in battle. Although these warriors might have been happy enough to spend their afterlife in their tombs, they were instead given a great palace which held countless warriors, all of whom were former mortals. The walls of Valhalla were made of spears. The roof was made of shining shields, while the room featured long tables at which the warriors would feast after a long day of battle, certainly befitting their status in their previous lives and their sacrifices in death. Valhalla was said to be truly enormous that the hall had 540 doors with each one large enough for 800 warriors to pass through at once. A wolf guarded the main door and an eagle flew overhead watching over it. Each day, these warriors rode out to practice the art of war, slaying and being slain only to become whole again then would feast altogether. There was no shortage of food and drink because the roasted boar would regenerate every evening to provide meat for the warriors, and the wine of honey supplied by the goat Hadron never ran out either. Odin himself didn't eat with the others, but only drinks wine as he fed his portion of meat to his two wolves, while the Valkyries who brought the souls to the hall now served them at their tables. The heroes who came to Valhalla were purposefully chosen for this honor to become an army led by Odin when Ragnarok comes, at which time they would march forth into a doomed but glorious fight, and they were therefore thought to engage in perpetual practice for this great battle at the end of time. Valhalla was the ideal afterlife for Norse Viking warriors, as they couldn't think of any worse fate for themselves than losing their fighting abilities through crippling injuries or from old age, and gradually becoming useless in a warrior society. To visit Odin in Valhalla was a common expression bearing the connotation of falling in honorable combat. It was common practice that when champions challenged each other into a duel to death, they were in the habit of invoking a journey to Valhalla as it was far better for true warriors to die in a glorious combat at the peak of their strength, assuring a true and honorable afterlife. Warriors who didn't get to Valhalla whether through cowardice or some other shameful end, would go to the dark home of the dead ruled over by the grim goddess Hel in a realm deep within the underworld. The Vikings considered such an end to be literally a fate worse than death. Although Valhalla is regarded as the Norse afterlife, it was only one out of the five domains made for the dead, but it is the most clearly described and seen as the grand vision of the destination of fallen heroes. The other realms were referred to by different names, even though in some cases, 
No clear reason is given about why souls would go to one place instead of another. However besides Valhalla, there's another afterlife realm governed by the goddess Freya, known as Folkvanger or the realm of the people and described as a beautiful world of flowers and streams where the souls of those who die in combat travel to upon death. Warriors were brought there by Freya to presumably await the coming of Ragnarok just like the heroes of Valhalla did. Odin's Valkyries were said to take half the heroes of any battle and Freya the other half. But no reason is given as to why the two deities selected the ones they did. Perhaps Freya of the Vanir family of gods valued a different sort of warriors than Odin of the Asgardian family, or simply that they agreed to divide the fallen warriors in half. Either way, the only real difference between Valhalla and Folkvanger lies in the way of entering them. In some other beliefs, the soul could also take up residence in its own grave after death and live out its afterlife peacefully or could go around terrorizing the neighborhood. The burial mound as one's final destination seems to have been among the earliest beliefs that may have given rise to the concept of Valhalla. Following this belief, a warrior would be buried with weapons, an armor and sometimes with a horse and other goods believed to be necessary in his next life. In time, this understanding of a warrior fully equipped to continue fighting, encouraged the vision of a realm where many warriors lived on in a place where they were supplied with whatever they needed to practice military games daily. There is no concept of time attached to Valhalla, nor does it correspond to any earthly events. It is unknown how long the warriors fight and feast with each other but it is understood that this is not an eternal realm. Some accounts made clear that all men who have fallen in battle from the beginning of the world will go in Valhalla, where they will remain until dying a second time alongside the other gods. It's worth mentioning that Scandinavian divinities were not immortal, but were kept young and strong through the apples of the goddess Hedun which they periodically consumed to ward off old age and death. This is the reason why at Ragnarok they were as vulnerable to any danger as mere mortals, and a number of them along with the great champions of Valhalla would fall before the forces of chaos. The heroes of Valhalla are presumed to fall in the flames of the world which they have always known serving Odin. And even though it was not mentioned, Valkyries are believed to perish at Ragnarok as well. Although the heroes are killed a second time, they go down fighting bravely for order and they were ultimately victorious even in defeat, as the new world rose from the destruction of the old. However some scholars claim this vision of the end and rebirth of the world, as being a Christian contribution to an older mythic cycle which ended with the death of the gods and the destruction of the nine worlds, therefore lacking the hope of resurrection. Some accounts note how the early references to Valhalla indicate that it was nothing more than just another term for the land of the dead, while some pre-Christian Scandinavian beliefs do not seem to support the concept of rebirth but instead emphasize a glorious death that will be remembered in the songs of poets. Believing that this claim deserves consideration, it is nearly impossible to know what pre-Christian Scandinavian beliefs were like, as there's no written record of them. But several archaeological evidence and later writings strongly suggest a belief in the afterlife and some sort of rebirth in a realm following one's death. Maybe Valhalla was once envisioned as a battlefield for the slain but later developed into something more, either before or after the advent of Christianity. Those who fell bravely for a cause would have been thought to deserve something better in the afterlife than wandering in a field of dead bodies filled with broken swords and shattered helmets. The living clearly believed that the dead going to Valhalla deserved a golden-roofed hall of endless feasts, surrounded by beautiful maidens in the company of the king of Norse gods himself. This vision offered consolation to those left behind, and a light of hope for those who regularly risked their lives in battles of all kind. No matter how Valhalla originally looked like, the grand vision given to it by the people made it famous as the Hall of Heroes honoring the fallen who will rise to fight again and forever. If you found this video of any interest, do consider leaving it a like, subscribe and let me know what you think or always thought about Valhalla in the comment section down below. And as always, stay curious.